The mighty Jagdpanzer E100, or at least Wargaming is so calling it. And I like the camo. In fact, I think the camouflage is great. It's probably my new favorite camouflage and attachment Wargaming's made in the game in general, probably right up there with my WZ111 5A, at least personally. However, one thing I don't agree with is how much money they're trying to rip everybody off of. 3,000 gold for the camouflage and 5 thousand gold for the attachment that is twenty dollars it's going to cost you in gold to get both of the things on this tank twenty dollars now obviously a good argument that wargaming could say is well if you don't want to buy it just don't buy it it's not uh, like it affects your gameplay well one thing that is very annoying about this is there's a lot of people that would grind down this line because they want to get that camouflage and a lot of people want to get that camo and the fact that you're asking 20 us dollars for a camouflage is just ridiculous in my opinion i don't care like, it just, it doesn't matter how good the camo looks. The fact that you asked $20 for a simply cosmetic thing, like what? It's not like you're in Rocket League and you're gambling on crates to not know what you get. This is literally just blatant a ripoff. And I would suggest for anybody to not spend your money on this camo. I don't want Wargaming to think in the slightest that it's okay to offer two camos, like an attachment and a camo of 5,000 gold for that little rack they put around the tank. Like, really? The 5,000 gold. That's actually insane to me. Well, not as insane as that, though. Look at that. There went my entire game in about uh, two seconds, as you can see. Getting heshed in the side by a 183. That's Wargaming pretty much saying F you back to me, I guess. But, uh, wow, that's just fantastic. Okay. Uh, today is off to a fantastic start. As I said, I'm going to leave stuff like this in. Normally, I would have just about cursed and uh, canceled today's video. But, wow, that's... I really can't even do anything about that. That's just unfortunate. There's nothing you can do ever to stop a shell like that hitting you. I didn't drive incorrectly. I didn't do anything wrong. Just got unlucky. And, wow, this is already... Um, off to a terrible start. Enemy U100 getting hit too quite a bit. Although this is the player's fault, actually, because I don't know why he's driving there. I will tell you one thing. If that 183 gets spotted on the enemy team, oh, I can tell you he's going to be in for one wild ride because I'm going to... Oh, boy. Let's just... I'm going to do some dirty things to that 183 when he gets spotted. Let's aim it on this U100. Fire a heat shell at him. There you go. Nice shot. Finishing him off. Now, that 183 is probably camping in the back corner of the map waiting for people like me to try and poke it. Um, I'm not sure if that's exactly what he's doing, but hopefully this Jagdpanzer, or not this Jagdpanzer, what the heck am I saying? Hopefully this bat chat is going to spot him in the future, and when he spots him, we're going to be able to get some pretty nasty shells out. We've got that 57 of you trying to clip my teammate, and with that, I'm going to plop this ridge right here and get a big old slap into you. Boom, 943. Not too bad. Unfortunately, in that amount of time, my team has managed to lose a 4,005. Because obviously, don't you know, you got to play your 4,005 frontline and aggressive. I, I really don't know what's going through that guy's mind right now, but not skill. I can say that. Not skill. Let's go for that. Vickers, boom, 877. That guy's not enjoying life all too much, but neither am I because... Uh, well, yeah, it's just me and the Fosh over here. And obviously, I don't want to get hit by the Fosh. But he's probably... Oh, he didn't shoot me. Oh, oh, oh. oh, baby. Oh, come on. Reload. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Nice snap into you. I don't want to get hit by the 183 either, though. Man, this is just a really, really bad scenario. Ooh, 183. Nice shot. I'll give you credit. You're going to die, but you did get a nice shot out in at least the long run. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good by any means. As you can see... The first game played in the Ag Panzer. I didn't do a bad job in the tank, but God, the tank did not do uh, did not do any justice to the enemy team yet. Oh God, here's the uh, here's the enemy 57 heavy. Let's get a nice slap into him, and I'll let me stick my gun up and salute the mighty German tank because ah, oh, we didn't get to bounce it. Tried my best, but for the first game saw the tank didn't do bad it did its job actually quite well for me losing 1300 hit points right at the beginning of this game you can see the yag actually did a pretty solid job and if you play the yag correctly you can do a pretty solid job in it but this is where it can be a tricky tank because a lot of people think that you can just pull out a tank with high alpha and just oh wow i did 5,000 damage that's not really how the yag panzer works and it's definitely a high skill cap tank. It's really, really tricky to play the Ag because obviously you saw what happened to me when I was spotted right at the beginning of that game. 
literally my entire hit point pool is just stricken from me. And that 183 was able to do 5,000 damage because of that. So the Jagdpanzer has that big weakness of having literally the biggest side armor in the planet, which is weak as a pancake. Not to mention it's a big tank, which means it's very easily spotted. Its gun, while it is accurate for a 170 millimeter, takes a very, very long time to aim in, which... Yeah, can set it back a lot of hit points if you're trying to trade shot for shot. So, it's great. Don't get me wrong. It's a really, really good tank. But it does have its fair share of weaknesses. I wanted to talk about how Wargaming was ripping everybody off on the camouflage, but as well about the tank itself in today's video. And as I said, I'm going to keep in the bad games. Even though we lost that, we did a pretty solid job. And honestly, I showed the tank for all that it was worth in that gameplay. I showed you that the alpha is really strong. The armor... Not so much. The armor can get bounces here and there, but yeah, when when you're spotted, you're pretty much picked apart in the tank, especially autoloaders. Like, you shoot an autoloader for 800, and then it just pulls out, and <laughs> there goes all of your hit points. Like, it's, it's a good tank, and I like the Yag. I always like to play it because of that big alpha, but I honestly think that the 183 is more enjoyable because of that Hesh. It just slaps the enemy and then you back in the cover where this tank it's got that terrible mobility and because of that it's really 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 tricky in certain games to get out of tricky scenarios because it gets tracked so easily it's got terrible traverse speed it's it's a weird tank that's all i can say it's a weird tank and unlike the e100 it's sitting at about a thousand less hit points which obviously that's a big buffer you know a thousand hit points makes you feel a lot stronger which is true especially because you're only gaining about 160 hit points on your alpha but 800 damage i'm not going to knock that that is a huge amount of damage per shot and yeah, that's going to rock the enemy's world if you manage to connect to Shell. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay right back here and hopefully we can aim in on the enemy team. But I don't know, it doesn't look like they're, uh, they're getting spotted crossing all too easy here. Yeah, it doesn't look like anybody's spotted. I'm probably spotted, but uh, yeah, doesn't look like anybody's detected. But you never know because sometimes tank destroyers like to sit over here. That's actually a really, really nasty spot for... Oh, wait a sec, wait a second... Wait a second, I'm going to turn my tank this way, and, uh, well, if that 183 decides to poke that again, I can tell you he's not going to be enjoying it. Oh, oh, come on, come on, pull a little bit more, oh, oh, baby, oh, you know there, somebody's gonna back up or pull forwards here, they're just going to. It's how it works, somebody always drives here, so I'll wait, I'm patient enough to wait. This is how you play the egg, you've gotta be patient, because in a game like this, you know that eventually the tank like this 183 on the enemy team is going to make the mistake of that, and lose a huge chunk of their hit points for doing that. But, sadly, I've got a tank like the Vickers Light against me. And obviously the Vickers is another pain in my booty. So, yeah, this is obviously, it's like a 50-50 here on what's going on. But, oh boy, that AMX learned his lesson. That was definitely worth it. The AMX died for that. Good job, AMX. I don't really know what to say about that. Obviously, we know that the Vickers is in that bush. And because the Vickers is in that bush, I'm thinking to be... Quite a bit of a sneaky player here. Maybe we can, uh, maybe we can snap a shell into that Vickers. Maybe. Oh, oh, come on. I'm just gonna back up. I'm gonna back up here. Maybe we can. Oh, oh, turn, 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 and fire. Oh, oh, oh. oh as I said, as I said, word for word, the Eggpanzer. It's got a great gun, and Alpha is key, but it's only key when you're able to connect your shots and. Yeah, the Yag really doesn't connect its shots ever, 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 ever. Okay, that Kron there, obviously, it's going to be a deadly tank if it plays this spot correctly. But thankfully, okay, again, the Yag, I, I don't... This is pain, that's all I can say. This is actually very infuriating, because that one was a decently aimed shot. That one should have penned, and it didn't. That was a very, very easy shot to penetrate, and it just did not want to pen on any world here. All right, we've got heat loaded this time. I'm not going to take chances. Heat will easily butter through that Yag, as you saw. Uh, not the Yag, the, uh, the Kronvang over here. So we're going to keep this heat shell loaded, and uh, we're going to see what he plans on doing here. I actually can back up here, maybe, and... Uh, this spot is a pretty solid one because if the enemy Kron decides to back up, we could get a decent shot out. But this is the issue with the Yag. And you can see right now that this is one of the most infuriating parts of the tank is you just sit and you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait and you just continue to wait the entirety of this tank's gameplay. And that's not, of course, super exciting. And now we've got like the Leopard on my rear, obviously. 
I just need to take a brief second and talk. How the hell did this shot miss? I would love to know because in my opinion, I just think Wargaming hates me at this point because you can clearly see that my lead was perfect here. I perfectly led the shell. Even when I pause it here, you can see I was aiming about there perfectly at the side of his tank with an HE and somehow the shell missed and completely missed the entire tank and hit the rock behind him. I don't even know how that's possible. At, at this point, you can see where I'm aiming and where the shell went. Somebody please explain to me in the comments how this happened. I, I thought it was possible that I did a bad job aiming, but no. I looked at the cron shot. That one was perfectly aimed. Oh, Wargaming hates me. Oh, come on. What the heck was that, Wargaming? Oh my god. Well, there probably goes my gameplay. Uh, we got the Kron on my side, and we got the Leopard over here. And with that, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of my gameplay. So, this was an awful game to show how the Ag can just go awful. That shot on the side of the Vickers just didn't like me. None of my shots connected. And because of that, we did actually terrible. I think I got one shell out the whole game, if I'm not mistaken here. As I said, I'm going to leave in the bad games. And this is a perfect example of how the Yag can be a pile of sheet. It really can be. And it, it really, really gets you infuriated because the shot on the Leopard wasn't a bad shot. And that one could have hit. And the shot on the Vickers there wasn't a bad shot. That one could have hit. And the shot on the Kron there could have hit. None of those shots that were bad. And as well, we had another shot on that Vickers that missed. All of those shots were not bad shots. And we could have easily dealt easy 3k, 4k damage this game if just the simplest shots would have connected. And that's not really a point of player skill because I know I'm good enough to hit the shots. It's 100% the tank's fault at this scenario. Like, that shot on that Kron, we all saw just blatantly missed and bounced off his tank. So... This is why I suggest for any player that, first of all, doesn't do well with patience to not go for the egg. Because I waited that entire freaking game to get those shells out, and they still didn't connect. Honestly, I think that that was the only shot I got off the whole game, was that singular shot right there. I, I actually think that that was it. That was my whole game. So, yeah. As I said, the egg, it can be a good take, but it struggles. It struggles a lot in certain scenarios. It can fall apart really quickly. And especially when people get behind it and manage to somehow flank across the entire team. That Leopard, by the way, just want to point out, managed to flank past our entire team. Get past them and then come up behind me and kill me. That made no sense. But, oh wait, no, no, we did get two shots off. We also killed the Amex. So we did like, what, 1,200 damage this game? Not something to be proud of. And yeah, that, that's the egg for you. So it's good, but it's bad. It, it can be really good, but it's also a pile of crap in the same scenario. And... Yeah, that's all I really got for the tank. So hopefully all of you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. If you want to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. Other than that, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Hopefully you don't have games as unlucky as mine.